Sure. So at you know at the end of the day, Nick and Tristan, it's all about relationships. It's not. It's you know you know this. And the best way that I know to build relationships in the fastest possible way is through organic social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I think what the difference is between just posting every day and doing boring real estate posts is you really need to open up and get vulnerable with your audience and share your true authentic self. And that's something that most people are not doing. Well, we are live. I'm Nick Baldwin, co-founder of Lab Code Agents. Thank you guys for being here with us for, this is episode two of Stick Shift. That's the best name we could come up with. We were thinking of, you know, when the shift hits the fan, you know, pile of dog shift, something (laughs) along those lines. But we figured... Let's be family friendly and call it stick shift. This show is all about how agents out there are navigating through the shifting market and still saying, still having, still have a successful business. um, And they're able to pivot at the drop of a dime. I have Steve, I'm going to totally butcher your name, Vron, Vronkov. That's good enough. Varenkov. Varenkov. There you go. Got it. Steve Varenkov with KW in Naples, Florida. Steve has a mega team down there. And I, I'll let Steve, I'll, I'll let you, Steve, tell us a little bit um, about your team so I don't screw it up. Sure. Uh, well, first off, Nick, thank you so much for giving me a chance to speak on Lab Coats. I've been following you guys for a really long time, and I'm grateful and humbled to be invited on Lab Coats. So thank no, you. thanks for being here, man. We appreciate you. Of course. Uh, so a little bit about me. So I've been a realtor for about eight years. Uh, I joined Keller Williams on day one. Um, I started off as an agent by myself, was on a couple of good teams, um, learned the ropes through them. And it wasn't until I met my partner, Nick Westbrook, that really, things really started to take off. And we went from doing 5 million, the two of us, to 20 million the next year, then eventually 50 and 60 million last year. Whoa, dude, that's awesome. Thank you. And we're we're on pace to do about 55 million this year. Okay, nice. Well, you know, listen, I always say, because it's it's this pretty much a similar volume as the year before, but because the market is shifting, as long as you do just as much as you did the year before, I think you're in a good spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You know, we're just incredibly grateful for the team that we built together. We have about 10 people on the team, full-time transaction coordinator named Jenny, full-time listing coordinator, uh, and a full-time admin as well. So we're just really trying to leverage our business right now. So Tristan is here. He's, he showed up fashionably late, late, but you know, listen, that's, what's so great about lab coats. Like we just kind of like fly by the seat of our pants with these things. You know what what's up steve um, how you doing man everything good everything's good yeah buddy. so um steve was telling me before we went live that a lot of your business um comes from organic social media so right. tell us a little bit about how you're leveraging social in an organic way and getting business from it Sure. So at, you know, at the end of the day, Nick and Tristan, it's all about relationships. It's not, it's, you know, you know this and the best way that I know to build relationships in the fastest possible way is through organic social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I think what the difference is between just posting every day and doing boring real estate posts is you really need to open up and get vulnerable with your audience and share your true authentic self. And that's something that most people are not doing. They're posting like just sold three bedroom, two bathroom, $800,000, like bought myself uh, a a Gucci, Gucci purse or whatever, you know, but when you like, for example, we had a closing yesterday. Um, It's someone whose house was burnt or was, was washed out from the hurricane in Fort Myers. And I helped them get a new house in Estero, Florida. And she was like 85 years old. 
you know, wow. and, I, and I shared the whole story about how she lost her home during the hurricane and how I was able to help her and her husband find a home where they can finish the last chapter of their lives together in this gorgeous community and how happy I am for them. And like, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't post anything about the price, beds, bathrooms, nothing. I just posted about her, you know, and her mm-hmm. story and stories, um, stories, stories are more relevant than ever. Yeah, that's so true. I, I love that. You know, here's the thing. I think a lot of agents, they do focus on, I mean, listen, you have to focus on, you have to have some focus on numbers because it is, a, it is a numbers business. And obviously the number, if you have the numbers, you have the, the income, but like, you know, it's a tra- it's not a transactional uh, industry. It's a relational industry. I mean, you're dealing with people who are buying the most expensive thing they'll ever buy in their life, lives. And then you have people who are living in houses for 25, 30 years. We're like, that's a really difficult thing to do to sell that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You're selling generations of memories and family and like you got to treat it like that so i I like that you're doing that thanks man it's true Uh, a question here in regards to specifics for social media like when you're saying authentic what are some of the things that you're doing besides that that great idea by the way on showcasing the the human aspect but what are some things that that you're doing routinely that get you business from social like people actually reaching out to you and saying hey we saw yeah. that, or maybe you're mentioning it, mentioning it during a transaction. What does that look like? Yeah, I, I think when you mentioned the ups and downs of a transaction and what got you to the finish line it, in showing like the difficulties of your deal that you just did and how you overcame obstacles I, and showing how real and authentic you are about your failures as well as the wins makes you vulnerable and people really connect with that. And then by that, by the time you really establish trust with people when they don't even really know you, but they follow you. So they feel like they know you like people, people think they know Ryan Serhan, but they don't never met him in person, but millions of probably a lot of people use him to buy real estate. Right. It's like, they feel like there's a connection already. So by that time it's like, Hey, come list my house. Cause they know you. Yeah. makes sense. That's true. I think, you know, it's it's important especially in this business when you're helping someone on that level because it can be a very personal transaction so they like when tristan and i go to events and stuff it's not obviously we're not buying and selling houses with other agents but like people come up to us like they have known us for years even though we don't know them but we're very open and transparent that they like see into our lives yeah. Just, they almost feel like they could say whatever they want to us. <laughs> you know I've never I mean? met you guys in person. And I feel yeah. like I have. Because digital is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it is now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like during, um, during, during COVID, when it first hit. So when COVID hit, um, we just found out we were having a baby. Right. So mm-hmm. it was like crazy times. And I spoke to my, my team leader. I'm like, what is the most important thing we could be doing right now? Cause this is insane. And they're like, you need to be sending care messages every single day, like 25 people a day. So literally the whole pandemic, I was messaging everyone that I could starting from a to Z. On yeah, my dude. Uh, and, and I did that 25 people a day, just kept doing that every day as, as part of my daily ritual, just like mm-hmm. working out. And that's when business really exploded. I think uh, that's something that, you know, we were preached to Tristan, like call people to see how they're doing. If they need anything, you know, Hey, I'm running to the store. I'm going to grab some toilet paper. Do you need some? Yeah. That was the whole joke. Right. Through the pandemic. That's but true. It works, man. It that's works. True. Well, hold on there. How did that change now? Because some people kind of have like, oh, again. Oh, that's true. Yeah. How, how has that changed over just the last few months? What are those conversations now sound like? Honestly, it's the same kind of thing. I'm just like, how are you? It's like, so it sounds really redundant, but it's so basic. Like, how are, like, a, just a simple, how are you and how's everything in your life goes so far. 
And people forget that. They think you need some crazy lead gen system, some crazy something, but all you really need to do is what Gary Vee says, care. Mm. I mean, there's a, f- there's a four letter word I could get my care. Just care. Reach out to your people, reach out, reach out to your agents and your sister markets that are like, figure out where your business is coming from. Like I know in Naples, a lot comes from the Midwest and like Chicago and New York and Jersey and Philly. So I'm reaching out to agents there. I'm trying to speak in their market centers online and do classes for them. So I get nice. those girls when they think of Naples, Florida or Boca Raton, Florida, my name mm-hmm. pops up. So figure out who those agents, the top agents are in the markets that are referring to your city the most and be, and build relationships with them. I think that's a huge piece of advice. Thank if you. you could figure out the patterns like the migration patterns yes. of where people are moving to and from and you create relationships with those agents you go hey man how's it going i'm nick with keller williams right or you know whatever you're with um and i was noticing that there's a good amount of people uh, moving from uh your area to my area and i just wanted to you know get to know you a little bit in yep. case we had you know, a client looking to move back and forth. I think that would be a super good piece of advice to to give agents. And how much time does that really take you? Like one, one minute. And that agent's going to be like, whoa, okay, really? Wow. All right. Because no one's doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's just smart. You know, like you guys are in Malibu, right? Yeah. So well, I'm not in Malibu. Malibu. I'm in frigid. Where are you? He's in in Malibu. I'm in the Malibu. I'm in the Malibu of the Midwest. (laughs) So, so you, (laughs) so you're in Michigan, Detroit. So a lot of people from Michigan move to Southwest Florida. So I should really be kissing your butt a lot and seeing who you can refer to my team. True. True. And see, maybe maybe we can sell you a vacation home. I'm actually licensed in New Jersey. So, um, <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, I live in Michigan, so I know people here, but I'm licensed in New Jersey. I know people there. Yeah. Whatever. I'm from New Jersey. You're from New Jersey? Yes. Originally, I'm from South Jersey, uh, Cherry Hill, it's called. Yeah, I know uh, Cherry Hill. But my entire family is from Philadelphia. I'm so from go- I'm from Montclair, which is north. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um, well, we got to get you down to South Florida eventually. Um, hey, I'm down. I'm down to come to South Florida whenever, especially in winter in Michigan. Um, so uh, you guys said you you said before we went live, you never paid for a lead. No, never. The, so, only, the only thing uh, I have paid for a lead is a referral fee. OK, well, I don't know. That's not really paying for a lead. But but I think like so other than social media, what are you doing now in the shifting market? to get business uh other than social media yeah not nothing oh it's all like so your business is a hundred percent yeah obviously sphere and sphere and past clients but like sphere. other than that sphere social sphere, and it's all social media like i'm really doing a lot of reels on instagram and facebook okay good more reach um i'm starting to do youtube videos of like community tours um, you know, like showcasing like my favorite beaches, my favorite, whatever, you know, just mm-hmm. it's all about the South Florida lifestyle. That's something I'm trying. So to answer your question, pushing the South Florida lifestyle and showcasing everything about about it is my main focus. And it's not just about real estate. Real estate is a, is a piece of it. But I want to showcase the best restaurants, the best beaches, the best everything, the boat lifestyle, golf you know, and just really uh, get people to migrate down here and see how wonderful it is to be a South Floridian. Love it. Yeah, man. I love that, man. So what are you doing next? Anything you're adding to your social media strategy in the next few months? 2023 is around the corner. What are you changing to adapt or that you're excited about to implement? Yeah, man. I I mean, I've been following what you say, and I think YouTube is going to be a huge component of 2023 and beyond. Uh, I think if we're not doing video, then we're missing everything. And that's something that I need to step my game up in and making professional content or just making more video in general. Like it's really need that to be my main focus, man. 
I love that, man. And yeah, definitely more video. So when we're looking at more video, what kind of video? Like you're in an amazing area, right? Yeah. What what kind of video are you looking to add? What does that look like? Uh, to really like what I, me and my wife are sit there and we say, what would we, what would we be looking up if we were wanting to know what it's like to live in Naples, Florida? Or yeah. like if, if you're sitting there and you're like, what's it like to live in Malibu? You know? So if I look that up, I'd want to know like, what's the cool little hot spots? Like what's the best restaurants? What's the best beaches? What's the best schools? What's the best, everything on and on and on best parks, the zoo, uh, you name it, you know, like, like paddle boarding and kayaking and boating here. Like, what's that like, you know, like, uh, so, so my thing is if someone's like living in South Florida, mm -hmm. living in Naples, living in Boca, you know, that I think that's really what I'm trying to hone in on. Or like lists, do like a video of lists, like top 10 things mm -hmm. you didn't know about um, Boca, top 10 yeah. things you didn't know about uh, where you get, where I, where I, Naples. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people, agents really overthink, oh, what should I, what should I make a video on? Just make a video on where you live. Exactly. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, just pick a place and do a video a week or a video a day or a couple videos a day or a couple yeah. videos a week. You can use your phone. There's a okay. bunch of inexpensive um, accessories you can get for the iPhone to make the camera a little bit better. But the new iPhone camera is really good. So you probably oh, don't need shame. one. <laughs> but, you know, you could edit it right there. What are you? OK, so you're doing you're doing video right now. A little bit. I, I have. So I, I have some videos on YouTube that I've taken with my amazing videographer. Joya. Okay, so you have a videographer. I, I have a videographer who actually in, introduced my wife to me. So she, I call her oh. my, fairy, my fairy godmother. I call her, her name is Joya. That's cool, dude. Yeah. She's the best. So she, she's with, wow. a company. she has a company called luxury and lens and they're, she's an amazing photographer and videographer in South Florida. And we're, me and her are in the process of creating like a 10 step video campaign, you know, like showcasing different awesome. cities. I'm just starting to, to cook that up, but nice. uh, she, I should really introduce Joya to you guys. Cause she talks about the importance of brand and marketing and how crucial it is to have amazing fire pictures. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's another conversation. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, but definitely like just don't overthink it just go out there grab your phone go to the yeah. zoo go to the park you know go to a local something and just film it um she, she told me she, joya told me one thing that uh really struck with me she goes if do film what you like doing you know like if you enjoy it people are going to enjoy it mm -hmm. it's like when i was a musician and i used to play songs at, at shows play the ones i like playing and that's what people are going to like the most you know, so figure out what it is you like and center it around that. So you have fun doing it and you don't hate it. Love it. Love <laughs> it. That's a great hack, man. All right. So we're, Steve, where do people follow you? Should they go to YouTube, Instagram? Go to Instagram. Go to Instagram at Steve Varenkov. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Steve Varenkov. I'm on LinkedIn. Follow yeah. Luxury Alliance team on, on Instagram and Facebook. Let me uh, right now. Hold what on. Do I, so look you up, Steve, Steve Varenkov. Steve Varenkov, look up my partners, Nick Westbrook, Joshua Holt, and just look up Luxury Alliance Team on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, I followed you. Oh, you've been following me, dude. I'm sorry. Let me follow you back. Uh, so you're, you're, you're gone. <laughs> dude, I'm the worst. Where you been, man? Oh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been following you since you had hair. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I don't even think Tristan knew me when I had hair. I don't. I'm totally kidding. I didn't oh, I was gonna say that's um, been a long time. Okay, I just followed Luxury Alliance team as well. Excellent, man. So I got you. I got you on both. I'm gonna study your reels, and I already love some of them because you and I talked before, and I was like, oh, and man, these are these are good. You're doing a good job. I can't wait to see version two of Steve. Yeah, man. Coming out soon in what? 
January, February. January. Yep. January. Totally. Like no, I thank you guys for like for, for the inspiration and motivation and uh congratulations on all your success, I should say. That's funny. <laughs> funny you should say that. Success. <laughs> and, and I you know, I follow success podcast. I have I have for the past five years. Even wow. when when Darren Darren Hardy was the uh, host of it, uh, yep. you know, I'm I'm super into personal development and personal growth. Uh, you know, I'm all about listening to audiobooks first thing in the morning before I work out and just before I go to bed. Just keep your keep your brain sharp. And if there's there's one thing that I could really leave with you guys, uh, give some advice to people out there. Yeah, I really really want to stress to turn off the news. Let's turn off the news, unfollow negativity, block people that make you crazy, focus on positivity and optimism. For sure. What, that's such good advice, man. I love that. Thank you. I mean, you There's know, a lot of garbage out there. Because you want to you want to protect your peace, man. You got to protect your peace and what's in between here. So make make yourself a top priority. And if you do that, everything else is going to come after that so i love that love bro. it love it thanks for being on man we appreciate Real, wait i have one quick question and we'll go what are you listening to right now oh good one uh i'm listening to jim Rohn, power oh. of, power of ambition we love uh, jim Rohn. it's one of my favorites uh and uh what's the book by darren hardy the compound effect the compound effect is great yeah and I, I always go back to that there's one chapter where it's called big mo and he talks about momentum and it's like when you have momentum, watch out. It says a train going like 55 miles an hour can bust through a concrete or steel wall or whatever. Did I say it wrong? Oh, I got that. I got that question wrong on my math test in fifth grade. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, Jim Rohn, Darren Hardy, uh, Gary V, big time. I love all those guys. Dude. Cool, man. Well, thanks for being on. Lots of good nuggets. Tell stories, make video. Listen to podcasts. Be yourself. Be yourself. Four good, four good points there. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Appreciate you guys. Take it easy and happy holidays. All right. You too, buddy. See you guys.